computer vision strategies for high quality data augmentation and synthesis in Actec. Actec is a burgeoning domain and holds a lot of potential for artificial intelligence and machine learning. Currently available data in Actec is scarce, incomprehensive and inadequate. Training machine learning models on such data can lead to a subpar performance in real world environments. This includes scenarios such as changing weather conditions, different soil types, growing crops, shadows, angle of sunlight, light intensity, etc. The paper showcases different augmentation and image synthesis techniques to align the available Excuse data in Excuse hand me. with the actual deployment environments and consequently make the model generalize better in order to handle real world scenarios. To hear more on this interesting effort, we have with us Mr. Aditya Bhaskar, who works as a computer vision engineer at iMerit. Being an ML practitioner, he's passionate about solving real world problems that have the potential to make a widespread impact. So without further ado, can we please put our hands together for Mr. Aditya. Uh, I am a computer vision engineer at iMerit Technology and we at iMerit are in the business of uh, ML data solution. We leverage human intelligence, uh, expertise and technology in order to provide high quality data solutions for all your ML needs. So let's get started. So let me start by asking you a question. Uh, how many of you are concerned about uh, the overuse of pesticides and insecticides and the uh, uh, harmful impact uh, that these things have on the environment as well as your health? Yeah, so uh, obviously a lot of you are concerned about it. And uh, the concern is not unwarranted because 95% of the medicines that are used, they don't actually reach the, uh, the actual destination for which they are intended to. Um, rather they leak into the soil and the environment and they actually overall, uh, they impact the overall health of the entire population. Now, uh, what have I told you that uh, that machine learning based automation has an important role to play here and uh, it can be used to actually reduce the consumption of these medicines by 45 to 90 percent and uh, you know help in mit mitigating this uh, issue. So here you are seeing uh, two pictures. In the first one, uh, we can see that a, a person who is manually spraying these medicines on the crops and it is being done in a very uncontrolled and a very non-targeted manner. And uh, obviously there is no control over it, so obviously we can see we can say that uh, it is being overused. Uh, in the, on the second image, we can see the same tasks uh, being carried out with, with the help of an ML powered uh, machine. And we can see that it is being done in a very targeted and a very controlled manner. So now, uh, uh, yeah, so whenever we talk about ML powered automation, we need a lot of data in order to train those uh, ML algorithms. Now there are certain challenges as associated with uh, uh, you know collecting uh, data manually. Uh, for any ML use case in general and uh, agriculture uh, in particular. So the challenges include slow turnaround time, it's a very time consuming process. Uh, it's very uh, labor intensive, it requires a lot of uh, manual effort and uh, a, lot, a lot of money to actually collect data. Uh, there's limited coverage in terms of all the scenarios that we are uh, trying to capture. Then there's inconsistent quality across all the data collection points. And finally, labeling is a very uh, expensive uh, and time-consuming process. Now, in this pic in this uh, slide, we can see two pictures. So, first is a real uh, image that is collected from sugar beet farm, and the second image is a synthetic uh, image which is generated using stable diffusion uh, of a sugar beet uh, farm. 
so uh, we can see that even uh, images that are synthetically generated they can uh, align very well with the real world data and we can use them to train our machine learning algorithms which brings us to the motivation of uh, our paper so the task that we are trying to solve is that of a semantic segmentation in which the task was to segment out the crop and weed uh, out of a, out of an image out of the background at a cross layer of uh, sh uh, sugar weed now the challenge here was that we didn't have enough uh, we didn't have uh, any ground to data to train our machine learning uh, algorithm so we turned to public data in order to see uh, if we can use them to train our models or not so when we explored the public data we found out that the public data that we are having for sugar beet crop or any other crop for that matter they are very scarce uh, they are very limited in number and they are very inadequate in terms of uh, different scenarios that we were uh, looking for uh, and when we trained our machine learning algorithm using those images they led to subpar performance and they didn't quite translate to actual efficiency gains so the idea was to curate a training data set uh, which we can use to train our uh, machine learning models uh, that are agnostic to different uh, situational variables like uh, different uh, lighting conditions different uh, perspectives and camera angles different uh, soil type structures and uh, different stages in the growth cycle of the crop so here we can see on the on the left hand side we have the public data we can see the lack in uh, the variation that we were, we talked about in the previous slide and on the right side we have the real world data on which we we had to uh, run our um, segmentation model in order to extract the crop and weed which brings us to the first approach that we have implemented which is uh, paired image translation so the reason being uh, that the public data lacked uh, Uh, diversity in terms of the different shape size and orientation of crops and wheat and uh, also the density of crops and wheat throughout the data set the density was very constant for the entire public data however in the real time data we were seeing uh, images in which the crop and wheat density was of different uh, levels so that was the idea to uh, simulate uh, different uh, densities and different shape size of the crops so we used a uh, pix to pix scan uh, uh, for uh, Uh, for paired image translation so pix to pix scan uh, is a image to image trans translation scan and it uses a patch scan discriminator and unit generator in order to learn the translation from <coughs> source domain to the target domain uh, so for training we used uh, uh, binary masks for uh, in the source domain and the corresponding rgb images in the target domain so once the training was over with the with uh, just by drawing the masks uh, the way we wanted we were able to generate uh, images of different shape size orientation and densities so in this slide we can see some of the uh, examples so in the first column we have the binary mask and in second column we have the generated rgb images and uh, in the we have two gifs in which in the first gif we can see uh, the crop generation by reusing existing masks and drawing on top of them and in the second gif we have the crop generation from the scratch by drawing the mask from the scratch we were able to uh, generate the uh, images and uh, we were able to uh, actually uh, simulate uh, the different uh, shape size and orientation of the crops which brings us to the second approach that we have implemented that is uh, image brightening reason being again the public data lacked in terms of variety in the different lighting condition in, in the in, in the image however in the real time data we had uh, again a lighting condition to in, uh, to uh, different uh, types of lighting conditions so for that we implemented uh, Uh, we used uh, two uh, methods for that the first one is contrastive unpaired translation similar to cycle gan it is unpaired image to image translation and again given an image in the source domain it learns the translation to the target domain so for training uh, we used uh, uh, the dark images from the public data in the source domain and uh, we used the uh, brighten up images in the uh, from from the real time data in the target domain So after the training was over we were able to simulate different levels of different extents of lightning in the uh, data set. Uh, the second approach that we implemented is uh, zero dc++. So we leveraged uh, off the shelf model that was uh, available it is trained on a very used data set. We used that and we used that model as it is and uh, we can see in this slide that using both the approaches we got different uh, extent and different types of uh, uh, brightening and we used both of them for to train our uh, in, in our training data set. So in that in this we can see uh, two gifs in which we can see the transition from uh, a dark image to a very, uh, to a bright image uh, which brings us to the third uh, approach which is perspective transformation 
The reason being that in public data set, we had all the images taken from a single uh, camera angle. It was an overhead camera setup. Um, there was lack of different perspectives in the public data. However, in real-time data, we were uh, seeing images that were taken from different camera angles, different perspectives. So the idea was to simulate different uh, uh, multi-angular uh, images in order to align the public data with the real-time data. So talking about implementation, so this was followed. Uh, this was done. First of all, we uh, did some post uh, pre-processing, uh, in which we uh, filtered out the public data, public uh, images uh, based on the crop and weed area. And this was followed by creating mosaics uh, by stacking them together to create a mosaic of eight cross four. And uh, finally, we used four-point perspective transformation of OpenCV in order to uh, simulate different perspectives. Now we use different parameters and different offset values in order to simulate different uh, perspectives and different point of views. Now this uh, this flow describes the steps that we followed. First of all, we have the images which we uh, stack together to form a mosaic, followed by perspective, uh, followed by the four-point perspective transformation. So this is just an example of one perspective with different offset values and different parameters. We were able to simulate different uh, perspectives. Which brings us to the fourth approach, which is soil type uh, augmentation. Now, the reason being uh, that uh, the public data lacked in terms of uh, the diversity in different uh, soil types and textures. It was very constant, there was only one type of soil. Uh, however, in real time data, we had all sorts of uh, soil types and textures. Also, after, uh, upon our analysis on the sugar beet data, we found that uh, the crops are grown in all sorts of soils like uh, black soil, cinder soil, laterite soil, uh, to name a few. So, the idea was to uh, simulate uh, different uh, soil types and textures and make the model agnostic to the environment uh, and the background. So talking about implementation, uh, so first of all, we used uh, some empty uh, soil images and we overlaid the, those soil images with the original soil in the public data uh, by blending them together to different uh, extent. Uh, this was done to preserve some of the features of the original, uh, original image like the shadow and other environmental agents. This was followed by smoothing the uh, edges in order to make them more realistic. And to top it all off, uh, we used the super resolution GANs in order to upscale them two, two times or four times in order to make them more uh, realistic. Uh, in this slide we can see uh, we have the first image is the original image and this is followed by all the soil type augmentation and in the GIF we can see uh, the different soil the transition between different uh, soil types. So with this approach we were able to simulate uh, the different soil types and textures uh, and to add to our uh, training data set. Now, finally, we leverage stable diffusion in order to uh, add more weed and grass to the data set and also to have a controlled synthesis using textual uh, prompts. So, we leverage off the shelf stable diffusion model and we use textual prompts along with the associated uh, strength values in order to simulate, uh, uh, in order to add different, uh, different, uh, different uh, uh, the volumes of uh, grass and weed. And this was followed by soil type augmentation because uh, stable diffusion may, uh, generates images that are a little artistic. So that's why we followed it with some post processing in order to make them more uh, realistic. So in this slide we can see we have the input <coughs> image and, uh, the f uh, and we can see the first output image that we generated using the textual prompt of uh, more grass and weed and a strength value of 0 0.4 and this was followed by the soil type uh, augmentation. Now, in order to benchmark uh, the value addition that brought in by all the approaches, we trained two iterations of uh, semantic segmentation model based on FPN uh, feature pyramid network with ResNet 50 backbone. The idea was to keep the model architecture fixed across the two uh, iteration and to make the training dataset variable. So, in the first iteration, we used only the public dataset with some standard augmentation. In the second iteration, we used the public dataset along with the augmented and synthesized images that we have talked about in the previous slide. So as we can see, this is the uh, these are the training and validation curves for the iteration two, in which we use both uh, uh, the public data as well as the augmented and synthesized data. Now this table showcases the improvement in terms of the metrics that we got. We use dice coefficient to uh, measure the performance of both the iteration. So in the first iteration. We can see that we got the dice, cofe dice coefficient of 0 0.08 and in the second iteration, that is with uh, all the augmentation and uh, all the synthesis um, approaches, we got uh, dice coefficient of 0 0.58, which means to say that all the approaches that we have implemented, it helped us really make the models more accurate uh, in order to segment the crops and the beets from the image.
Now in this in this slide we can see some of the visualization results. So in the in the in the, in the first column we have the results from iteration one in which we trained the model using only the public data. And in in the second column we have the results from iteration two which is using all the approaches that we have uh, implemented. As we can see in the in the first column we are hardly getting any any segmentations for the crops and weeds. <coughs> However, in the second slide, we can see that uh, we are—I uh, mean—the crops and weeds are getting very nicely segmented out. Now, in order to uh, test our approach on a on an independent data set of a different so, uh, of a different crop type altogether, we used a rice data set, and we ran both the iteration of models from both the iteration on that. So, in that again, we can see in the iteration one, we are hardly getting any segmentation. However, in iteration two, we are able to segment out uh, the uh, rice uh, crops and weeds. Brings us to the conclusion. So, with all the approaches that we have tried, uh, we have implemented in this paper, we were able to successfully simulate uh, different lighting conditions, different perspectives, uh, soil types and textures, uh, density and distribution of crops, and different stages in the growth cycle of a crop. And this paper showcases the ways to make the models more uh, accurate, generalize better, be agnostic to different uh, different uh, variables, and uh, be more reliable. Now the approaches that we have implemented in this paper they can be extended to other crop types uh, and other plant variety and uh, other domains altogether like uh, AV uh, security systems healthcare retail uh, etc So to summarize uh, the better data leads to uh, robust models uh, which translates to happy farmers good food uh, healthy po healthy population and a flourishing economy Thank you Are there any uh, questions? Yes, please. Typically, uh, when you talk about brightness, it actually messes up your. Uh, so, brightening of brightening of images, the bigger problem is it actually you know creates a lot of issue in your texture data because it it defines the depth of the image at some level. Now, uh, I see you have done brightening before, but at the same time, you are also trying to identify the texture of the soil. So what was the issue and how did you solve it? Because you know, the moment you correct lightning, I'm sure that would have created some problem with the texture uh, uh, of, of the soil that you wanted to detect. So we followed that with, the, again, as we talked about the soil type augmentation. So the idea was to we can just uh, segment out the uh, crop region that we are concerned about, and we can just change the texture, the soil background, to a different soil background. Either we can do that, or we can just keep the original soil background that we had uh, to start with. So any other question? Hi. Uh, so, what are the other architectures other than FPN you have used? So uh, we tried few more architectures, like we tried UNET, uh, and we tried few more architectures. Uh, but we were getting the same results, so more or less, uh, from all of them. So the idea was to keep the architecture fixed and uh, play around with the data set in order to see what value addition we can uh, bring on the data set side. Cool. Yes. You show the images that you took and the images that you took in the real world, but how can you ensure that the how can you ensure that the images that you took will be consistent with other models, that are, that with the same model you use, and other people take pictures, and those pictures data will be consistent with your product and style of the angle that you use? I know you mentioned that the, you also implemented a way in which multiple perspectives can be considered in order to match with the real world. But even then, how do you ensure that other people who use who use the same model will be consistent with the input style that you go in? Uh, so in this paper, we have uh, implemented uh, all the things that we were actually seeing in the real-time data and what whatever we were actually expecting to see in the f uh, future deployment environment. So all those approaches we tried to capture it with different perspectives. So that, that was just one example in which we tried to simulate the uh, perspective in which the, the image was taken from an uh, angle at from the front. So with different param as I said, with different parameters and different uh, you know different offset values, we can simulate different perspectives. So it's basically on the uh, basically on the you know the, the condition that we are trying to simulate. So we try to uh, capture whatever we are seeing right uh, right now and we, whatever we were uh, expecting to see in the near future. Uh, is there any other question? Okay. Thank you. Everyone.